It's the Rob Carson Show. Are you ready to be pod smacked? Now, here's Rob Carson. Hey guys, welcome to uh, episode number 222 of the Rob Carson Show podcast. If you are uh, downloading this from iTunes, iHeartRadio, tune in, Google Plus, Google Play, uh, Audio Boom, SoundCloud, Patreon, YouTube. Uh, it's 222. Also available through Amazon Alexa. Just say, Alexa, play the Rob Carson Show podcast, and uh, Alexa will play the latest episode, which just happens to be this one. Also, you uh, Liberty One TV viewers, thank you. Thanks for joining us. Um, the, the network is growing very nicely. If you haven't become a member, I hope you will. It's only 33 cents a day. It's only $10 a month, $99 a year. We'd really, really, really appreciate it. Also, check out some of the swag that I have here. See this right here? I've got a bunch of uh, T-shirts, um, uh, mugs, uh, laptop cases, hoodies, uh, onesies, tanks. Any one of my politically incorrect designs are available there at teepublic.com slash user slash conservatees. Uh, order in time for Christmas. T-shirts only $14. And Dots homemade, home-style pretzels are the best thing you've ever had. They're the best pretzels you've ever had. I promise you that. And if you don't think you're the best pretzels you've ever had, you have no sense of taste because they're spectacular. And everybody I've let try them goes crazy. They are wonderful Dots pretzels. Order them online, dotspretzels.com. All right. Today is a full show. Yesterday we did an audio blog, and I'm going to start doing some shorter commentaries as well as a regular show for you every single day uh, to give you more entertainment for your buck, more bang for your buck. So let's get started with the day's events, shall we? Harvard Center for American Political Studies, 204 pages, found that 54% of voters agreed that as the former head of the FBI and friend of Jim Comey, Robert Mueller has a conflict of interest in the proceedings that are going on right now with Donald Trump. 70% of Republicans, no big surprise, 53% of independents, 40% of Democrats agreed. Among those who voted for President Trump, 73%. Among Hillary Clinton, 34%, of course, because it's the kangaroo court. Has the investigation revealed any evidence of collusion? 38% of the voters overall said that no evidence of such activities has been found. 35% says there was evidence. Well, there's not, you idiots. Uh, there isn't. 27% did not know the answer. I'm thinking the 35% and the 27 could be uh, combined to uh, just basically not know what the hell they're talking about. Two FBI officials working on the Robert Mueller Russia investigation exchanged text messages. You know this. Peter Strzok and his, uh, his liaison, his mistress, exchanged uh, 10,000 texts, I guess. Boy, things were pretty hot and horny with those two, weren't they? Some of them are just quite stunning. And, and the thing I want to point out is this guy, Peter Strzok, was removed from the investigation after doing interviews with Michael Flynn, interviews with Hillary Clinton, interviews with uh, several other Clinton officials. Let's not forget... Um, We've got uh, Huma Abedin and Cheryl Mills. So many Abedin and Cheryl Mills did mislead about knowing about Hillary Clinton's server. They didn't get charged with lying by the FBI. Okay? Michael Flynn pled guilty to it. Now, here's the interesting thing. A couple weeks ago, on a Friday, we got news that Michael Flynn was going to plead guilty to lying to the FBI. The following Monday, they finally admitted that Peter Strzok was forced to leave the agency and leave the investigation. Had the Flynn team known about this tainting, this bias, perhaps the general would have never had to plead guilty to lying to the FBI. And by the way, immediately following the interview with Michael Flynn, Peter Strzok told CNN there was no evidence of lying. That was back in February. Unbelievable. One of the texts, I want to believe the path you threw out for consideration in Andy's office, and there's no way Trump gets elected, but I'm afraid we have to uh, take a risk. This is uh, Peter Strzok writing to uh, Lisa Page, uh, likely uh, talking about Deputy, Deputy FBI Director Andrew McCabe. It's like an insurance policy in the event you die before the age of 40. The text message is one of 375 released Tuesday night. Ahead of the House Judiciary Committee panel, hearing with Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. I have some audio from Trey Gowdy from that hearing, and it's compelling stuff, okay? I know this stuff can get a little dry, but I love me some uh, Trey Gowdy uh, uh, speech porn. Strug, of course, top investigator on the Trump investigation and the Clinton email probe was kicked off Mueller's team over the summer. 
remains unclear why the existence of the text was not disclosed until four months after Strzok was removed. Michael Flynn, folks. Strzok and Page's exchanges show a deep disdain for Trump and admiration for Clinton. Strzok called uh, uh, Trump a effing idiot in October 2016. Also, another one said, uh, F Trump. The pair exchanged another uh, cryptic message that, that same day. Quote, Maybe you're meant to stay where you are because you are meant to protect the country from that menace, Page wrote. This is what he replied. I can protect our country at many levels. Not sure if that helps. Meaning he could use his position of power and authority as part of this investigation for possibly Donald Trump becoming the president. Which calls into question the uh, Russian dossier and whether whether the FBI was involved. Like many of the exchanges, the full context of the message is not entirely clear. Strzok also offered praise for Clinton while suggesting that he planned to vote for her. March 2nd, 2016, he said he'd likely vote for her. Strzok also congratulated Page after Clinton clinched the Democrat Party nomination. Congrats on the woman nominated for president in a major party about downtime. While he was praising Clinton, Strzok was working at the center of the investigation into her use of a private server. He emailed Clinton on July 2nd, 2016, three days before then FBI Director James Comey cleared her of criminal wrongdoing. Strzok interviewed several Clinton aides who sent and received classical classified emails that ended up in Clinton's server. Huma Abedin, Cheryl Mills, as I mentioned, both appear to have provided misleading responses to questions about their awareness of the, uh, of the uh, server. They knew about it. Strzok was picked to oversee the Russia investigation at the end of July 2016, several weeks after the Clinton probe ended. And he was in the tank for Hillary Clinton. He was against Donald Trump. President today was uh, speaking uh, beside his uh, this helicopter, uh, this, uh, uh, what do they call it, Air Force Three or whatever. <laughs> anyway, his helicopter today. Uh, blasting, because basically, I mean, right now, uh, if you're looking for evidence of any kind of Russia collusion, it ain't happening. Here's what he had to say to the press about uh, the uh, FBI investigation into collusion and what's going on right now. Never been this way where they spent all these millions of dollars. So now even the Democrats admit there's no collusion. There is no collusion. That's it. And we got to get back. That's why the Democrats are going after Donald Trump for um, alleged sexual harassment. To running a country. What we have found. They might have been, maybe they switched from the 25th Amendment saying that he's mentally ill. That there was that. And then, then this. And the collusion thing appears to be uh, moot. And what they have found after looking at this really scam is they found tremendous whatever you want to call it you're going to have to make up your own determination but they found tremendous things on the other side when you look at the hillary clinton investigation it was uh, you know i've been saying it for a long time that was a rigged system folks that was a rigged system when you look at what they did with respect to the hillary clinton investigation it was rigged And there's never been anything like it in this country that we've ever found before. It's very, very sad. And by the way, nine prosecutors on Comey's team, all Clinton, major Clinton donors, major Clinton supporters. From the UK Daily Mail, Jim Comey's draft statement of the Hillary Clinton FBI email probe was edited to remove implications she was guilty of a crime before it went public. Jim Comey's draft statement on the Hillary Clinton email investigation was edited several times before his public announcement to water down the FBI's findings and remove any implications she was guilty of any crime. A letter sent to the Bureau by Senator Ron Johnson, chairman of the Senate Homeland Security Committee, shows multiple edits to the 2016 draft. This includes downgrading the claim that it was reasonably likely that hostile actors accessed Secretary Clinton's emails. It was later replaced that to only... Uh, such intrusion was possible. Also, mentioned that uh, that the emails, the use Never of the service, this way where they spent all these millions. Stop, Donald. I don't want to hear from you again. Also, claimed that it was uh, uh, extremely careless of her to use the uh, the email server rather than grossly negligent. That makes a major difference. 
Though the FBI had not yet interviewed Clinton, then the Democrat candidate for president at the time the uh, statement was drafted, FBI officials had already determined that criminal charges were probably not warranted and had begun thinking about how to present that conclusion to the public. Comey on May 2nd circulated a proposed draft statement to other senior FBI officials laying out the basis for the eventual decision against recommending charges for Clinton and her aides. It's bought and paid for, folks. Peter Strzok was in the room as Clinton was uh, interviewed. By the way, there's no uh, transcript or recording of the interview at all. It was later assigned to the special counsel, Robert Mueller's team, to investigate the collusion allegedly between Trump and Russians. Nothing was found. And, of course, we all know why he was removed. We all know why he was removed. Trey Gowdy was um, uh, questioning Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein on Capitol Hill testifying before the House Judiciary Committee on the Mueller investigation. I like the way he talks, and I want you to listen carefully. This is largely about Peter Strzok and his uh, his uh, part in the investigation of Russia collusion. So this agent in the middle of almost everything related to Secretary Clinton and President Trump sent pro-Clinton texts, anti-Trump texts to yep. his paramour in response to being told maybe he is where he is to protect the country from that menace, Donald Trump. He's. I want you to think about this. You've got an investigator saying that he's there to protect the country from a menace, Donald Trump. That, to me, says he wants to stop this man. And if that means trumping up some sort of charges, uh, he's looking at it. He's already made up his mind that Donald Trump is guilty of something. said, I can protect our country at many levels. And then he said mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton should win 100 million to nothing. Now think about that, Mr. Deputy Attorney General. That's a pretty overwhelming victory. 100 million to zero. And, and when I read that last night, what I thought was this conflict of interest free, senior agent of the FBI can't think of a single solitary American who would vote for Donald Trump. No. That's where the zero comes in. Not a single solitary American he can imagine would vote for Donald Trump. This is the conflict of interest free special agent assigned. And then he went on, if that weren't enough, to belittle Trump supporters by saying he could smell them at a Walmart in Virginia. The FBI and the DOJ were loaded with uh, uh, Clinton sycophants. They were loaded with uh, Obama sycophants. They still are. They still are. And if the shoe were on the other foot, and this was a uh, all Republican panel, if it were all Republican prosecutors who gave money to uh, Donald Trump, and they were investigating the Hillary emails, wouldn't you be saying the same thing? Here's a little bit more from uh, Trey Gowdy. This is the person we needed to avoid a conflict of interest. And then he said this. They fully deserve to go and demonstrate the absolute bigoted nonsense of Trump. But he wasn't content to just disparage Donald Trump. He had to disparage Donald Trump's family. Now, they also exchanged texts talking about how they could possibly use other devices that were untraceable. They clearly knew that what they were saying and what they wanted to say even more about Donald Trump in this investigation they didn't want it traced or recorded. This is what he said, Mr. Deputy Attorney General. He said, the douchebags are about to come out. He's talking about our first lady and children. This conflict of interest-free special agent of the FBI. This is who we were told we needed to have an objective, impartial, fair, conflict of interest-free investigation. So he's openly pulling for the candidate. He had a role in clearing, and he's openly investigating a candidate that he has bias against. And then if that's not enough... Bias? It's it's all out hatred. Sis. He say he, he, he has tools at his disposal basically to, to, uh, to disrupt or destroy the Trump presidency before it could happen. Trump is an effing idiot. What the F just happened to our country? Yeah. This is the same man that said he would save our country. Yeah. What happens when people who are supposed to cure the conflict of interest have even greater conflicts of interest than those they replace? That's kind of like... Um, that's kind of like saying uh, if there's a black man on trial and, and calling all of the, uh, the other black people uh, effing idiots. Okay? Uh, that, that's, that's essentially what they're saying. 
This is an unbelievable, uh, unbelievable example of bias, an unbelievable uh, example of uh, essentially a kangaroo court. If not a kangaroo court, certainly a kangaroo investigation. Got one final uh, piece of audio. This is from uh, uh, Trey Gowdy and then uh, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein actually uh, replying with an answer. You nor I nor anyone else would ever sit Peter Strzok on a jury we wouldn't have him objectively, dispassionately Amen. investigate anything, knowing what we know now. Why didn't we know it ahead of time? And, and, and my last question, my final question to you, and I appreciate the chairman's patience. How would you help me answer that question when I go back to South Carolina this weekend? Congressman, uh, first of all, with regard to the special counsel, uh, Mr. Strzok, was already working on the investigation when the special counsel was appointed. The appointment that I made was for Robert Mueller. So what I'd recommend that you tell your constituents is that uh, Robert Mueller and Rod Rosenstein and Chris Ray are accountable and that we will ensure that no bias is reflected in any of the actions taken by the special counsel or in any matter uh, within the jurisdiction of the Department of Justice. Yeah, how do we know that? We've, we, we've already seen it. We've already seen the bias. We've already seen it with uh, with Michael Flynn uh, pleading guilty to lying to the FBI. Meanwhile, two Clinton officials skated. We've already seen the bias. The bias is already happening. The bias has already happened. When we have evidence of any inappropriate conduct, we're going to take action on it. Yes, you are. You're going to take action on it. And you're going to hold and set on it for four months until a Clinton administration official has to plead guilty to lying to the FBI. Then the following Monday... You released the fact that the investigator in charge of the interview was massively biased against the president. Uh, and that's what Mr. Mueller did here. As soon as he learned about this issue, he took action. Yeah, he took action. And he didn't tell anybody it until about four months later. Again, after a general pled guilty to lying to the FBI, even though the same guy who was excused after the interview told CNN there was no untruth told. There was no story there. Then they got to the point where he was let go, and four months later, they decided it was all they had. It was all they had. So they got Robert Mueller, or they got uh, uh, Michael Flynn, to uh, so terrified of losing his entire career, the rest of his life, that he admitted to changing some uh, statements that he said to the FBI. Honestly, uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Let's move on to a couple of other things. Uh, Doug Jones, victorious campaign, although Roy Moore has not uh, conceded defeat. And I don't like Roy Moore. I said this. He, he was a crap sandwich as a candidate without the bread. CNN found out that most of the money coming into uh, Doug Jones' campaign, California, New York. California, New York. Moore received the most outside money from Texas, believe it or not. Doug Jones received 808000 from individual donors originating in California, 680000 from New York. Roy Moore received the most Alabama money from Texas, about 236000 California provided much of the outside money for uh, Moore as well, about 164 k Democrat Jones had twice as much money as Republican Roy Moore. Uh, Open Secret reported that Jones had $11.5 million, while Moore had $5.5 million. As of December 14th. And, you know, that in combined with uh, a massive drive to uh, register felons by um, uh, Democrats in the state of Alabama. That combined with a news story that came out on November the 9th about uh, Roy Moore's alleged interest in teenage girls that had never come up before. Uh, even though he ran for office eight times, even though there was uh, massive money spent by Luther Strange, his primary opponent. Uh, op research that showed none of this. But somehow, somehow... Washington Post got a uh, a person who said she was 14 when uh, Roy Moore uh, dated her. Uh, whatever. Again, I think Roy Moore is a crap sandwich without the bread. I really do. I don't like his Bible banging. Uh, I am a Christian, but I, I don't like uh, when people wear the Bible on the sleeve, when they, when they wear their faith on their sleeve. Uh, and I certainly don't like him moralizing on the campaign stump because I don't think... At least there was a time in his life where uh, there were some moral issues with him. Because I believe some of the people who say that he dated them as teenagers, I, I believe that there is some uh, evidence in that direction. 
Philadelphia City Council got its racist way the other day. There were a lot of uh, shop owners in bad parts of uh, Philadelphia, and they own these little uh, convenience stores, and they cook food, and uh, and they sell, uh, you know, 40s, you know, packaged liquor. And uh, they, they have, they're behind black, uh, uh, bulletproof glass. And there's a city councilwoman there who said that it was um, insulting or demeaning to her constituents to have to order through bulletproof glass, even though it's uh, safety, safety here. The city's Department of Licenses and Inspections uh, must promulgate regulations to provide for the use or removal of any physical barrier in stores that offer food and alcohol by January 1st, 2021. City Council Chamber was full of store clerks and owners who were against the measure. Mostly Asian American residents spoke out. Now, these are in neighborhoods that are largely African American. And I would say that this was a racist measure. Because I've lived in cities where Asian people go in and open businesses in African American neighborhoods. And there's a good deal of envy envy and hatred because they can be successful there. One of the owners said, I was a victim of a robbery when I was 10 years old. I don't want it to happen again. Another store owner spoke through an interpreter Said if the council goes through the new the new rule, people will die. There's no, it's nonsense. The bill would have unintended consequences and for business owners to buy firearms to defend themselves, making the problem even worse. And the city council person involved in this said that, uh, well, you know, you can just you can just hire a security guard, or you can wand people when you come in the store, which is an unnecessary cost when bulletproof glass works just as well. David O., a councilman, said if we take down the safety glass, they're not changing their business model. They're not moving. What they will do is purchase firearms. I think that is a worse situation than we have today. Well, there you go. You asked for it. You asked for it. You was racist. You was racist. Let's get into the latest cavalcade of sexual harassment, uh, um, people being accused. Filmmaker Morgan Spurlock, he went ahead and confessed. He didn't even uh, wait. Morgan Spurlock did uh, supersize me a few years ago, which was an attack on McDonald's. It was a, an attack on capitalism. It was an attack on the United States of America. It was pure propaganda. It was, it was horse crap. It was, it was as bad or worse than Michael Moore. He uh, uh, revealed an unprompted extended tweet, I am the problem. Every wife and girlfriend I have ever had, I cheated on. As I sit around watching hero after hero, man after man, fall at the realization of their past indiscretions, I don't sit by and wonder who will be next. I wonder when will they come for me. Before detailing an incident when he was in college in which he said the woman he was dating believed she was raped. I don't know what to do. We stopped having sex. I rolled beside her. I tried to comfort her to make her feel better. I thought I was doing okay. I believe she was getting better. She believed she was being raped. She had been raped. Then there was a time I settled a sexual harassment allegation at my office. This was about eight years ago, and it wasn't a gropey, feely harassment. It was verbal, and it's just as bad. I thought that it funny at the time, then realized I'd completely demeaned and belittled her to a place of non-existence. I paid. I paid for peace of mind. I paid for silence and cooperation. Most of all, I paid so I could remain who I was. I've been unfaithful to every wife and girlfriend I've ever been over the years. I would look at each of them in the eye and proclaim my love and then have sex with other people behind their backs. What caused me to act this way? Was it the abuse I suffered as a boy when and as a young man in my teens? Or because uh, being consistently drinking since he was age 13, he says, I'm seeking help. You know, you know what? Screw you. Screw you seeking help. You seek help all you want, but you left a path of damage behind you. Tavis Smiley, he's a PBS uh, uh, host. I don't know much about him. I know he's very left of center, and he apparently has been taken off his uh, radio and TV show, his PBS uh, TV show, and his, I guess, NPR radio show. Uh, here is Tavis Smiley. He's saying he's ne- he's having none of this, and I'm going to tell you, Spurlock just admitted. But right now, you've got people like Mario Batali. He's been fired from the Chew on ABC, which is a talk show. That it's like the view, but they cook and they talk, you know, politics or pop culture, whatever. He'd been removed from that fired. He's had all of his products removed from uh, store shelves at Target for one store. Uh, He has stepped down from his uh, uh, restaurant empire for now. 
And this is all because of allegations. This is not because they've gotten he's gotten any due process. This is not because of legal settlement. This is not because of facing his accusers in a court of law. None of this. This is a, as I said uh, weeks ago, a warlock hunt. Glenn Beck actually called it that today. Not saying that he stole my idea. It's, it's fairly obvious. It's a warlock hunt, you see, because the other was witch hunt. These are guys. Anyway, here's uh, Tavis Smiley addressing the allegations against him now. Hi, I'm Tavis. I was as shocked as you were to hear of PBS's sudden announcement regarding my television program. Let me say at the outset that I have the utmost respect for all women. And I certainly celebrate the courage of those women who've come forth of late to share their own truth. But let me also assure you that I have never groped, inappropriately exposed myself, or coerced any colleague in the workplace ever in my 30-year career. Now, this goes into the uh, the warlock hunt element of the uh, investigation. Here's Tavis des- describing what he learned from some of his co-workers that was going on without him knowing. PBS launched this so-called investigation of me without ever even telling me about it. I only learned of this investigation because former colleagues, former staffers, started to call me to tell me they were getting a phone call from some PBS investigator asking, number one, did Tavis ever make you feel uncomfortable in the workplace? And number two, can you give us other persons to call? Only after threatening a lawsuit did PBS investigators agree to sit down and talk to me for three hours. And even then, their minds must have been made up yeah. because almost immediately after that session ended, this story broke in variety. PBS investigators refused to look at any of my documentation, refused to talk to any of my current staffers, refused to give me the names of any of my accusers, and refused to give me any semblance of due process. That's true. That's absolutely true. Uh, he's been removed. Radio and TV, his livelihood cut off for accusations. This is where the hashtag MeToo movement, the wheels are coming off. One Democrat... Republican or Democrat Representative Marcy Kaptur of Ohio stunned her colleagues earlier on a day before yesterday saying that some women with the way they dress invite harassment. Said, I saw a member yesterday with her cleavage so deep it was down the floor. And what I've said, it's really an invitation. Maybe I'll get booed for saying this, but many companies in the military have a dress code. I have been appalled by some of the dress of members and staff. Men have to wear suits and ties. Okay. She since uh, backed off those comments. Um, there are, she added, by the way, under no circumstances is it the victim's fault that they're harassed in any way. I shared the stories from my time here in context of the Me Too legislation, how we can elevate the decorum and the dress code to protect women. Okay, yeah, I get it. And listen, there's no excuse for sexual harassment. But if you're wearing cleavage and you've got them pushed up and you're wearing cleavage that you're a shirt that that I mean makes your cleavage ob- obvious, don't be surprised if you catch my eyes straying that way. All right? Uh sorry. There there's a reason to display cleavage and it's to be noticed. I uh, you may call that whatever you want, but that's the way it is. And the same I think goes with short short skirts and showing a lot of leg. If you don't expect me to occasionally have my eyes stray in that direction, you know, and you're offended by that, sorry. That's just me being a guy. That's just that's just us. All right? There was a reason why, for the longest time, people watch Fox News. Uh, at least to some shows like um, Outnumbered. Outnumbered. I used to call it Eight Legs and a Dude. Gorgeous women, short skirts, big b- busted women showing cleavage, and then one doofus in the middle there. And I'm not saying anything against Kimberly Guilfoyle or Andrea Tanteros. They're smart people. But come on, man. There's a reason why Tanteros was right in the front on the right. You were seeing it. Sexual harassment complaints at Harvard are up 65%. Guess why? Well, <clears throat> the majority of the complaints over the last three uh, uh, years have been by students. Uh, in the academic year 2015 to 2016, most of the complaints were made by school staff. Uh, I think that a lot of this has to do with the warlock hunt. Sexual harassment pl- complaints, are they really sexual harassment really on the move at Harvard? I mean, really coming back at Harvard? 
Or are there people who are looking at Title IX and saying, huh, well, we might be a payday for me here? Uh, I don't think that, uh, particularly on campus where men have been emasculated and uh, uh, essentially uh, stripped of their manhood, like I said, which is emasculated, that uh, sexual harassment is on the rise. I think that there are a lot of women who are using the uh, the last few months, and there's a, there's a furor, there's a there's a frenzy, there's a there's a uh, pitchfork and uh, torches mentality with a lot of women in the country. And this is where it can get very dangerous and can hurt a lot of people. You ever heard of Rodney Anderson, starting quarterback at uh, Oklahoma? December 4th, a woman named Courtney Thornton accused Anderson of raping her at an apartment more than two weeks earlier. The two met at a bar, went back to the apartment. They didn't have sex. Two weeks later, Lorton, uh, Thornton then told uh, an ex-boyfriend, who th- she was thinking about getting back together with him, that she recalled images and feelings of Anderson forcing his fingers there and biting her. She was admittedly intoxicated that night. The rape accusation made through an emergency protective order made national headlines. Suddenly, if you searched Rodney Anderson on Google, the top item suggested he may have raped a woman. Problem, he didn't. Assistant District Attorney Susan Caswell found numerous inconsistencies in Thornton's account. DA's office announced Thursday that no charges would be filed. Basically, what happened was she never expressed any hesitation or regret about the the thing that happened when she was uh, texting her friends. Uh, Friends had corroborated the the claim that Thornton said she had fun. She began to brag about the relationship. She was having fun with him. He was a nice guy for not going all the way with her. Apparently what happened was the last several messages Thornton sent to Anderson, uh, Anderson, which were suggestions that they get together, were not replied to by Anderson. He was basically saying, I don't want to be your boyfriend, and she got mad about it, so she accused him of rape. She needs to go to jail. She needs to go to jail. Cleveland County District Attorney Greg Mashburn was uh, careful to say that his office could not provide that Thornton was lying about what happened. But that's effectively what they did by not finding any reason to press charges against Anderson. Courtney Thornton tried to initiate a relationship with the star of the football team. After he didn't reciprocate her interest, she tried to ruin his reputation and his life. Bitch needs to go to jail. Maybe it's cold outside is uh, under fire. You know, the song, Baby, it's cold outside. Mary Nahorniak, USA Today, is part of a movement to get rid of the song. Baby, it's cold outside because it's literally about date rape. Guys and Dolls composer Frank Loser. The, the, the woman sings that she has to leave her beau's house and he suggests otherwise. He spells out the reasons why. She shouldn't leave. The wet is frightful. There are no cabs. They could share another drink or a smoke. The man smoothly persuaded her to stick around. Feels a little close to coercion, more close to coercion than comfort. He simply doesn't take no for an answer, interrupting or shooting down her attempts to leave and beefing up uh, her half-baked ideas to stay. (laughs) She She says, this speaks volumes about male predatory behavior. Many women know what it's like to feel trapped by a man, whether emotionally or physically in those situations. It doesn't matter how it began or why she wants to leave. It only matters she wants to go. The interpretation of the song is made popular in the uh, Tumblr post in 2016. Posits that a woman uh, would like to stay, but is held back by societal norms in the 1940s in which an unmarried woman staying over at a man's house would be scandalous. Karen Dongs, an injured, uh, English and Gender Studies associate professor at the University of Southern California, says the song has to be interpreted as a product of its time. It was this kind of culture of repression that would forbid this kind of hanging out. The song itself is an effort to furnish female sexuality with a set of excuses as opposed to a coercive song. They're saying they need to uh, re- just get rid of the song. It's time for our Christmas carols to match our evolving culture. Well, you know, bullcrap. It is a ham-handed attempt at seduction. Uh, trust me, I know I've been there. I've never uh, coerced a woman to stay. Uh, the, the women who ever stayed with me uh, always stayed because they wanted to, and I made, they made sure that they wanted to, okay? But, you know, say, oh, you really don't need to go. 
you can stay. No, you don't, we won't do anything. We won't do anything. You know, have, we'll have a drink. We can hang out. We'll watch a movie. And that's what I mean. And when I said that we wouldn't do anything, there, we wouldn't do anything. It's just a ham-handed attempt at, uh, at seduction. And it's also, it's a dance. It's a dance between a man and a woman. Uh, and this is how it happened. There's no shame in it. It's courtship. It's called courtship, folks. Oh, yeah. Um, I didn't know that Jingle Bells was racist, racist by the way. Yeah, it's a racist song. Tyna Hamill, theater, uh, theater history professor at Boston University, told the Boston Globe that it's long been a secret racist song that has been systematically hidden from Americans as they celebrate the season. The history of the song has remained hidden behind its local and seasonal affection. She continued saying the song's black-faced and racist origins have been subtly and systematically removed from its history. Well, okay, well, whatever. So it's meaningless then. So that's meaningless. All right? The song was written 160 years ago by James Pierpont. It was written to ridicule black people. Okay? First performed in a blackface minstrel hall in Boston in 1857. Okay, we all knew this, right? No. Professor said that her st uh, study of the history of the song proved that the uh, song was made to satirize how black people reacted to winter activities, such as sleigh riding. Comedy routine was to portray blacks as uh, behaving foolishly, grotesquely, and incompetently. But Hamill says that over the time, the minstrel origins of the song faded away as people continued singing it during the holiday. Hamill also points out that the song's author later joined the Confederate Army and wrote fight songs and uh, patriotic airs for the uh, Confederate States. Slight nail up. The professor is urging the town of Medford, Massachusetts to drop its annual celebration that of the song in their town forever. Shun the racist song going forward. It ain't going to happen. <clears throat> ain't going to happen. This is kind of funny. Danish charity that provided support for virgin women under the over the age of 40 has been forced to change its requirements. Why? You can't find any over 40 virgins to help. Lindemann's Virgin Monastery in Denmark was founded in the 1800s to help single, worthy, and need and in need virgins over the age of 40 by offering housing. They didn't uh, surgically check to see if you were a, a virgin. But apparently uh, they are still using funds to uh, financially support women over 40 who fit the description without the virgin clause, apparently. Virgin clause there. Man who heroic heroically saved a bunny from a California wildfire apparently shows everything wrong with whiteness, according to an article published Monday. Damon Young, editor-in-chief of the digital magazine Very Smart Brothers, columnist for GQ. Well, I'm sure VSB, that's, that's, that's got to be for white people. They got a lot of black uh, white, white people working there, right? No, not really. Piled under category white people, the guy rescuing the rabbit shows that white people care more about animals than African Americans. No, there are just some people who care more about animals than people. Liberals generally care more about animals than people. I can't help juxtaposing the feelings expressed by the, about this bunny with the feelings generally expressed when black people are in grave danger. The action was the whitest thing he's ever seen. I don't know that whether it's rabbits, cats, dogs, horses, cows, velociraptors, the lives and well-being of animals seem to be considered by many white Americans much more precious than uh, and much more deserving of protection and care than the lives of black people. Okay, well, you know what, bud? There are a lot of white people who, uh, who give a lot of money to charities. There are a lot of white people who adopt black children who, uh, who have been abandoned by their families. Uh, there are a lot of black people shooting each other in the inner city, so I wouldn't be so sure to cast aspersions on white people in this country for wanting to rescue uh, a rabbit. That's a real dick move on your part. I mean, it's a really, really dick racist move on you uh, by a guy who writes for uh, VBS Very Smart Brothers, which is obviously a publication that is meant solely for black people. It's kind of funny. Uh, a drug kingpin in, um, in California, Stephanie Smith, 43-year-old mom, she had uh, a pot growing operation that included over 24,000 plants. When uh, they raided the property, they realized they were dealing with a multi building operation with the main warehouse likened to a weed fortress. Apparently, one of the properties was an empty warehouse, but it had an electric bill of $67,000 a month. Inside a uh, four story warehouse, police found thousands of plants stacked next to one another under heat lamps on wood tables, an advanced irrigation system. 
12 foot metal rolling fence, fortified doors, large concrete wall. This is a 43 year old mom. In my 26 years, it was the biggest grow that I'd ever seen, according to the uh, San Bernardino Police Lieutenant Mike Madden. There were all different rooms for all different processes and hydration. Now, here's the thing. They seized 18,000 uh, pounds of marijuana, but guess what? They just made recreational pot legal. So it doesn't look like she'll be able to uh, be charged with uh, growing and, and distribution. She'll be charged for not having a permit, essentially. She hasn't been arrested or charged with a crime. I, You know... I think it's time we got over pot. Just got to get over pot. Uh, principal at high school has scrapped a 50-year-old uh, graduation tradition because it's offensive to students whose identity is more fluid. What they did is they had gender-based uh, caps for the graduation. They got rid of it. Times have changed in terms of gender equality. It's really meant to be a step forward. Someone said that uh, it's been that way since 1959. My answer is not 1959 anymore. Uh, the principal argued that gender-based colors for graduation caps might prove offensive to some students. Uh, in an effort to meet uh, changing gender dynamics, particularly to be inclusive of those who identify as more fluid and for whom color-coordinated identifier would be uh, complicated, if not offensive. Some feminists at Glen Rock aren't happy about the change. They're arguing that it is unfair that female students will have to wear the color that had traditionally been worn by male students. So now they all got to wear red, I guess, right? The girls now have to conform to men once again, which is something I thought our society was past. There's no, nobody's happy. He just then said it would be preferable if each student could pick their own color. Me and my family are fully in support of the LGBTQ whatever community. She added, before explaining that Glen Rock High School has been uh, always been an accepting community, this is simply just a tradition that I and my fellow classmates were looking forward to. Whatever, Jesus. Wear one damn hat color. Wear black. Who cares? Everyone's going to be fun, uh, offended about something. I don't want to talk about that. Finally, this is pretty funny. Cooking, cleaning mothers will be banned in advertisements across the UK, uh, UK next year. Following a study which claimed traditional gender roles are harmful and outdated, even though there are a lot of the times true. The decision to tighten the regulation was announced by the Committees of Advertising Practice. Wherever they appear or are reinforced, uh, reinforced gender stereotypes can lead to mental, physical, and social harm, which can limit the potential of groups and individuals. Really? Really? <sighs> Family members creating mess while a woman has sole responsibility for cleaning it up in adverts, which suggest a specific activity is appropriate for boys because it is stereotypically associated with girls or vice versa. Now, listen to this. So they're changing all of this, all right, even though, you know, like, for instance, gendered toys. Um, right now, they don't call it a boys or girls section of Toys R Us. But if you notice commercials on television in the United States anyway, and it's probably going to change in Great Britain, they still, they, the girly girl stuff is still girly girl stuff. You've got, a, you've got a kitchen set. There's a little girl in the commercial. I just saw this the other day. Am I offended by that? I spend all my time in the kitchen. I do all the cooking. doesn't offend me. All the boys still have cars that crash with each other. They have, they have uh, fake guns. They have dart guns. They have squirt guns. All the girls, they have uh, Legos that they have a beauty shop. All right? You know why? Because they spent a f load of money on research and development before they even consider making the toys and investing the product in, in, in all of the dyes it takes to build the product, manufacturing, distributing, marketing. They do it because that's what the kids want, idiots. Do you realize that, that cleaning supplies, vacuum cleaners, uh, car parts, uh, uh, tools. There is a difference between the sexes. Most men want tools. Most men like to tinker with cars. Most men, you know, uh, are the guys who, if there's anybody who changes the oil in the family, the guys do it. That's the way it is. Women, a lot of time, want to do the cooking, want to do the shopping. I do all that in my family, and I don't mind it. I suck at cleaning, though. Terrible. And I'm getting my wife a vacuum cleaner for Christmas. She wanted one. There. Business apparently in a response are overrepresenting ethnic minorities and homosexuals in their marketing in order to ward off accusations of bigotry. So you're going to, you know, whereas like 3% of the population is gay and advertising half of the half of the people are gay. The majority of 500 advertisers surveyed admitting producing campaigns which featured same-sex couples and non-traditional families even if doing so clashed with their brand identity. 
While half of respondents reported using fewer white people who said they no longer represented modern society. White people no longer (laughs) represent modern society. That's good to know. Campaigners last week demanded toy retailers reboot their catalogs to depict a world in which boys are more likely to play with dolls or as likely as girls to play with dolls. Catalogs found girls were nearly seven times more likely to be shown engaging in activities linked to caring or nurturing than boys, and that's because they like it. Hoping to socially engineer a future in which men and women are indistinguishable, the Let Toy Be Toys campaign claims that presenting play in a way that suggests some activities are linked more to boys or girls inflicts a long-lasting harm to children. It's horse shit. While Let Toys Be Toys insists that gender stereotypes are tired and out of date, research suggests that the sexes have a biological predisposition to certain toys with with children as young as nine months old, preferring toys specific to their gender. You idiots. So you're going to inflict some sort of a politically correct bullshit, no proof uh, theory so nobody is offended, and you're going to harm business and make them advertise against the groups that would otherwise and, and want their products. That's what it's all about. It's just idiotic. It is just, just idiotic that this is the world that we live in. All right. We've gone on about 46 minutes. I would say that's a pretty nice show. I would like to thank you guys very much for uh, for listening. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. I am on um, uh, next week, which is the 18th through the 22nd. I am on WLS in the morning. No, no. Next week, I'm on WYAY in Atlanta in the morning from 6 to 9 Central or 5 to 8 Central Standard Time. I'm on KFYI in Phoenix, 5 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. The week following Christmas, I'm on WLS in the morning in Chicago and on KFYI in Phoenix in the evening again. So if you want to see all that, just join me on Facebook at Rob Carson Show. In the meantime, thank you for uh, joining me on the audio podcast on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and all of the other uh, venues that I have. If you would share on social media, it would be a godsend. It really, really would. Also, if you get a chance to join Liberty One TV, that would be terrific. Uh, Terry Littlepage is a wonderful person who uh, has invited me to become a part of this great network, and he's got a lot of great talent. My show has around 400,000 views a month. Let's bring that up. I'd really appreciate it if you joined me. And like I said, I'm going to be doing long-form talk and also commentaries and other things as well. So I know that uh, I don't know, 50 minutes of, uh, of your time every day is a lot. So we won't do it every single day. But I do appreciate you joining me. If you'd like to write me personally, Carson on the radio at gmail.com. In the meantime, I'll just say uh, have a great uh, weekend. God bless you. Merry Christmas and happy Hanukkah. And we'll see you again soon. Thanks for listening to The Rob Carson Show. Friend him on Facebook at Carson Show, on Twitter at Rob Carson, and on Instagram. Uh, I think Facebook and Twitter are enough for now. We'll see you soon.